Hello, and welcome to uh, Wally Bois. And today, I've got a really simple little tip for you. A little trick, you could say. Could be a life saver. Yes, I'm going to save your life. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, as you see, I've got two bits of wood, okay? One piece of wood has got a screw in it, and the other piece of wood has got a hole in it ready for the screw. But here's the predicament. In this case, these are shoots for wooden shoot bolts. But you see the little knob on the top there? How do you put a screw in there without splitting that little knob? Well, I'm going to show you. It's actually really, really easy. It's a simple little technique. I've seen so many people, well, they come unstuck. Yeah, not necessarily shoot bolts, wooden shoot bolts, no, but other stuff. Trying to put, well, their uh, screws into little tiny bits of wood. And what happens is it ends up splitting across here. Okay, but you see, I did it. Oh, it's like magic. Yes, I've got the screw in there without any problems. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to prep up. Now, it's very simple. You've got to create a clearance hole. A hole with a bit of slack in it so the screw can go in there without any problems. That, that hole's a little bit on the big side, to be fair. But yeah, it should go in there. That's your clearance hole. But it doesn't go all the way in. It goes in far enough just so you can get a bit of bite into this piece of wood. Now, you don't want to be using a great big screw or a screw that's too long or right to that edge because you like to split it, yeah. But that's not that's not the trick, no. The trick is really simple, which I'm going to show you. So, okay, so we've got we've got our clearance hole, right, okay. We've got our countersink, our countersink. You should, wherever you've got a countersink screw, always countersink um, the hole. Yeah, put a countersink like that so that the head of the screw can sit neatly into that hole, into that countersink. Otherwise, it's going to have that screw itself is going to try and split the wood. I shouldn't do it in this case because a big old clearance hole. But yeah, I've countersunk it anyway with this countersink bit. Also, you've got to think, okay, what is it going to be screwing into? Are we going to try and force the screw into that little tiny block of wood and risk splitting it? No. What we're going to do is we're going to drill part way through. Not all the way through, there'd be a hole there, wouldn't there? But yeah, part way through with a, with a drill bit just the size of the shack, the internal dimension of the threaded part of that screw just there but the internal dimension and that's what you'd use that one for so that's your pilot hole um, so you're going to create that as well so there's three stages you've got obviously drill your hole you've got a can sink your hole yeah create the can sink there and then you've got to have your pilot hole into this piece here okay so when you draw this one then you not you don't go all the way in no you only go into this piece of wood here because you now, this is another mistake. When you see people drive screws in, try, you know, into softwood, and they're trying to you know, screw to bits, they never get them tight here. What happens is they, when you screw it in, it actually works against each other. So you, that should always have a countersink. Not a countersink, you should always have a clearance hole for the screw. So the it becomes a clamp, and it clamps that piece of wood to that piece of wood. Ah, but what is the trick? The trick is so simple. It's just silly simple, it really is. Grab your piece of wood, and you always shove it in your voice like so. Okay? Or you could use a G clamp like so. I've got a couple to do, so I can show you both ways. So I'll do it with the G clamp first. So we'll put the G, in the G clamp like so. And what that's doing is that's putting sideways pressure um, against across the grain. And that way it cannot split. So when you put your screw in, instead of trying to push the piece of wood apart, it's actually having forcing the screw to cut it's thread into the little piece of wood. So now what we'll do is we'll just place that screw into there like so. And that's it, done. Has it split the piece of wood? Only good thing, oh, I'm gonna do the clamp and it's gonna split. I bet it doesn't. So I've done it so many times, as you see, it has not. Yeah, so that's one done using a clamp. And we're gonna do pretty much the same thing again. And another one's prepped up, well that's one that's already done. And then this one here that's prepped up here. We've got three to make. There's a screw. You could use these like the plasticable type screws. Like so, this is a three and a half mil, three point five. Sorry, not four. Um, you could use one of them, but I'm going to use these. These are the bugle headed um, plasterboard screws, and they're actually quite good for this job because they have very sharp threads and a very sharp point. So they they tend to cut their way through quite nicely with, with the least amount of the, um, force, you know, uh, on the actual piece of wood that goes in. So let's just bring it up a little bit, just so you can see. So that's my voice, it's an old record uh, voice. Very old, in fact. I've had, I've had it for a good many years, and that was very old when I got it. So that's in there like so. No, and it's basically doing exactly the same job. Then you whack your screw in, like, like so. And it 
the vice is now preventing that little block of wood, that little tiny block of wood, from being able to, um, you know, go sideways and split your piece of wood here. So there you go, that's three of them done like so. Really, really easy. These little shoot bolts that we make, these are. They're quite cool. Yeah, so basically you have like, three bits of wood like that. One like that, one like that, and one like that. And you screw it to a door or a cupboard or something like that, and effectively, you know, you can open and close, you know, bolt your door. Yeah, in wood. Yeah, it looks cool, hey? Wouldn't you say? Oh, and uh, anyway, that's my little tip. And this is my little Pandora. It's getting very excited, Paul, then. I ain't got no treats on me. And my Sebastian's over there as well. Oh, dear. They're coming to pester. They probably want, you know, munchies or something. Do you want munchies, Dora? Oh, uh, you want munchies? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll get you some munchies. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway that's a little tip for today so um hope you found that of interest and uh yeah leave a comment down below because i do read the comments mm -hmm. but you probably already know and boop the old like button and maybe that subscribe button because then you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time i upload another video sebastian leave a bum alone <laughs> dirty dog well, there you go <laughs> on that note it's time to go so ta-ta